så har vi regjerende Norgesmester Lappart, som er driver der. Men vær så god, Simon, der bor det ditt. Ja, takk. Klare? Tegn. Hei, jeg heter Simon, og til daglig så jobber jeg på Neon Grut. For Neon Grut så er gode opplevelser viktig for kaffen. Jeg tar det her på engelsk, for det er det jeg har øvd inn. And experiences are important for us. Good experiences, both in coffee and in coffee service and customer service. And one day I was standing behind the counter at Neon Grut, and I tasted this one coffee. It was like nothing I've tasted before. I was like, I didn't know coffee could taste like this. And so, preparing for this competition, I went to Coffea Circular, which roasted the coffee that I tasted at Neon Grut. That one time where I was like, is this really coffee? And so, I went to Gothenburg to meet uh, Ivica uh, Svetankosti. <laughs> uh, the founder and roaster in Coffea Circular. Uh, and Gothenburg is also where I have the water from today. It's softer than the water we have in Oslo, and the roast is, uh, the roaster also had this water in mind when roasting a coffee, and that is also why I'm using this coffee. Coffea Circular uh, has a farm in Kenya, and when Ivica went down to Kenya, first time, he observed the washing stations in Kenya. And what he observed was that the different varieties came together at one washing station and they were blended without any notion to ratio of the blend. So he decided to separate and isolate the varieties. And that's one of the things that Coffea Circular did. So today, the, the bean you will taste is an isolated batyam from the Coffea Circular farm in Maru, Kenya, 1,500 meters over sea level. Coffea Circular also did a couple of other things in Kenya. They decided to cut out all usage of water. So today, when the water touches the coffee, it will be the first time water is applied to this coffee through any stage of the process and harvesting and growing of the coffee. That underlines the sustainability. And sustainability also creates this red thread uh, throughout Coffea Circular. Coffea Circular has uh, decided to invert the production pipeline, focusing this year on the cherry, or last year's harvest on the cherry. Other coffee productions have focused on the bean or the grain in the cherry, while Coffea Circular decided to focus on the cherry. Because Coffea Circular believes that there are hidden powers within the, the cherry that the other coffee production doesn't really utilize. One of them is a really high level of antioxidants, over 40 times more than blueberries that are considered high in antioxidants. The process that the cherry has gone through and the bean has gone through is a natural-based process, but it's in a state of hypoxia, which means that there's not sufficient amounts of oxygen uh, for it to be a natural process. So it's somewhere in between an anaerobic and a natural process with a little oxygen, but still not enough to be natural. This creates uh, a result, this results in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a cherry and in a coffee that is uh, very yellow, in the yellow specter on the sensory panel. Uh, this also applies to the coffee. Uh, and you will taste that today. I'm using 18 grams of coffee <coughs> to 240 grams of water when I'm brewing this. I've decided to use the Hario switch with Sybaris filters, as this gives me full control over the brew, from the first pour till when I stop the brew with a switch. I'm using uh, 90 water at 93 degrees today, as I've found this brings out the best of the coffee. The first pour will be 50 grams. I pour this in about 10 seconds, letting it steep for another 30. 
This pour takes out the acidity in the bean. And as I release it into the cup, and with the other, uh, with the other pours, I'm gonna be doing three pours today, um, it will create a very, very well balanced cup. cup. The second pour will be 100 grams. I'll start this pour at 40 seconds and pour it till about one minute. So it's a 20 second pour and I will let that draw down for another 20 seconds, creating another 40 second window. The hardest switch makes me able to, uh, to switch in between an immersion brew and a percolation brew. which I found suits this coffee really, really well. The third and final pour will be 90 grams, giving us, taking us up to the total of 240 grams of water. After I pour that, I will wait till it, uh, my time is two minutes on, uh, on, on the total brew time, and then I'll release it. That's another 40 second window. As I'm pouring these next uh, pours, I will give you my sensory notes, so please pay attention to that. But first, we'll finish this one brew, and uh, I release uh, the switch at two minutes and switch it back up uh, after 12 seconds, as I've found this is the best for the coffee, and uh, yeah, creates a consistent cup of coffee uh, for this bean. So the sensory, back to the sensory notes, the aroma of this cup is, uh, is round uh, and uh, you, you will, uh, sorry, <laughs> you will, um, there we go, You'll taste uh, yellow plum. You'll taste floral honey. You'll taste coca nibs. You will taste wine, uh, more of a red wine. And you will get hints of apple cider vinegar and, um, and raspberries. The flavor of the cup, when hot, will be an umami surprise in the back of the mouth, like a chili sensation. Okay. This uh, chili sensation goes together with the Kalamata olive taste uh, and um, pairs well with the, the coca nibs that you'll also get in the taste when hot, and along with the yellow plum. The yellow plum continues when hot and uh, pairs well with the uh, rum liquor yeah, that you'll get when warm along with a hint of cinnamon. When cold, you'll get the taste of bananas, overripe bananas, vanilla and a hint of uh, uh, clementine. The acidity in this cup or, uh, is uh, a tartaric and citrusy, um, uh, a citrusy uh, acidity. Uh, and the aftertaste is uh, an aftertaste, a long aftertaste with, uh, um, with a, a rum liquor, uh, dark chocolate and whiskey f uh, finish in the back of the mouth. The balance of this cup uh, is well balanced, uh, uniform, uh, in the sense that, uh, uh, yeah, in the sense of, um, sorry, uh, <laughs> in the sense of um, uh, very well balanced throughout the brew. Uh, 
Uh, the body is medium body, but juicy and light. Uh, I'll let you taste, uh, smell the aromas for, uh, real quick. Here you go. Overall, this is an isolated Kenyan, it's an isolated Batyan. Let's see, I'll make sure you have enough coffee. And uh, this isolated Batyan is isolated in the sense of the processing, isolated in the sense of, of taste, and isolated in the sense of it's a unique Kenyan. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Thank you, time.